Hi friends and welcome back to the Control Engineering Geek. Through this video, we also gonna learn how to model mechanical systems uh, using uh, an example through some steps that are simple but very active to find <coughs> the governing equation of any given mechanical system and then check whether these equations are correct or not and later you can utilize these equations to find the transfer function between any given or desired uh, input output pairs let's start it so we have this equation or this system here we have this system here we have four boxes or three boxes sorry m1 m2 m3 we have the input force with f of t that affects block m2 okay let's add appropriate coordinates for the system the gig is confused here okay we will make him happy later so let's assume that the all boxes m1 through m3 uh, are moving downward with the corresponding uh, displacement x1 x2 and x3 okay let's proceed to the se second step which is defining the kinematic relations degree of freedom and states as you can see because of these springs the k2 and k4 you cannot relate these displacement one to each other there is no relationship between them therefore this is uh, a three degree of freedom system since it is a three degree of freedom system you are expected to drive three governing equations in order to fully describe this system okay the states are just the corresponding derivatives of the coordinates we have the position velocity and acceleration of m1 we have the same for m2 and m3 these are the states we need to now assume uh, a part of the movement so you can assume whatever you want i just here stick to that in a x3 is greater than x2 which is in turn is greater than x1 these assumptions will give the following forces internal force of the uh, <coughs> connecting terms here which are just springs here so you can see that k1 is a tension uh, so is the other springs this is uh, coming from this assumption so whatever assumption you you assumed here uh, you have to drive the corresponding uh, forces that this assumption uh, gives to the system okay based on these assumptions states degree of freedoms uh, we can now drive the governing equation using the first principles which is in this case is the second law or second uh, law of a newton this is <coughs> applying the newton second law requires finding the block diagram or the free body diagram of the system starting with m3 m3 is affected only by the uh, inertia of its mass and the force that is coming from the spring the force as you can see here it's in tension so it will be the opposite side for m3 the values of the force that coming from this spring is the k4 multiplied by the difference between x3 and x2 so if we apply the second law of newton this force has to be in the direction of the coordinates with x3 so this force is negative okay uh, you can arrange this force in this uh, format here as you can see the degree of freedom x3 has all terms on the left hand side uh, positive so answering this question is yes so all terms of the degree of freedom are positive so this equation 
is one of the three equations that uh, we need we need uh, uh, to describe the uh, motion of this system okay let's proceed to the m2 this is the block diagram or the free body diagram of m2 just observe the direction of the equation uh, the forces here see this force is upward is a tension for the spring but as a uh, reaction you have to draw it on the free body diagram of the m2 so it's pointing downward f of t is all given originally is pointing downward uh whether but the k2 and k3 are all also in a tension state so their forces are forcing upward as a reaction on m2 applying second law of newton uh don't forget these forces have to uh, follow the direction of the assumed coordinate which is downward so we have these two forces are positive these two forces are positive whereas these two forces are in a negative uh, sign rearrange this system as you can see on the right side of the system all the corresponding uh, terms of the degree of freedom x2 are positive so uh, the answer of the question yes so this system or this equation is correct so we can represent it our second governing equation let's proceed to the final block which is m1 we have the force coming from downspring and upspring applying the newton second law the forces that are uh, following x1 or the that directing downward are positive so we have k2 x2 minus x1 positive whereas the k1 x1 is negative rearrange the system x1 double dot x1 all have positive signs so this equation is also true so so far we have uh, three output of the systems three uh, possible outputs which which are the position of the m1 m2 m3 and we have one input which is the force f of t so we can find three transfer functions between f the input and each of the outputs the driving equations this these are the driving equation which we draw from the first principle second law of the, uh, second law of newton we can uh, take the laplace transform of these equations assuming initial zero initial conditions so the, these are the corresponding transfer uh, all the governing equation in the s domain or in the laplace domain so if we for example want to find the transfer function between the output x1 and the input f of s we can perform the following steps from 6 we can write x2 in term of x1 from 4 we can write x3 in term of x4 so we have x2 x3 all are in x1 in terms of x1 so you can uh, introduce these two relationships in this equation here instead of x2 you have a term in term uh, in ter uh, of the relationship in term of x1 uh, for x3 also you have another relationship that also in, is in term of x1 this is the final forum so this equation this equation is in term of x1 which is the corresponding output that we want to drive the transfer function for it in term of the input f of s so do a little bit arrangement and then simply you can uh, take the ratio between x1 and f of s uh, from this equation um, and then you can find the transfer function between the output x1 and f of s the gig is 
impressed. We can make him confused again. Uh, he is happy now, but since we can uh, ask this question, can you find the transfer function between x2 f of s between x3 f of s? Yes, we can do that uh, following the steps that we uh, saw in the previous slides. I hope the video was useful for you.